Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today I will be reviewing your bird life photos. Before I get started, make sure to like, subscribe and check out my Instagram down below. Alrighty, so a couple weeks ago I got you guys to send in some photos uh, for me to review and I've got, I've got the video ready now. There's a couple things that I use when I look at a photo to see if I like it or not. So the things that I use, got my notes here, are composition. So where it is in the frame, I like it, you know, if the bird's looking in one direction, I like the bird to be on one third, so then there's a lot of empty space on the other side that looks like the bird's looking into. It just makes the image look a lot nicer. Colours. Now, if they're really vibrant, that's really nice, as long as they're not fake. Um, you know, if they're fake colours, if you've, you've done a lot of editing, saturation, vibrance, then I, I don't like that as much because it does look fake. Uh, lastly, we've got... Not lastly, sorry, but we've got background. So if it's a nice smooth background, if it's a lovely smooth background, um, it looks really appeasing uh, compared to, you know, something such as uh, more of a dirty background with lots of sticks in it and branches and that just doesn't look as nice. But then again, you can easily get rid of that in um, Photoshop. Um, you can check out um, some videos that I will be posting soon about editing uh, the backgrounds of your images in Photoshop. Next, sharpness. Now, none of those things really matter if your image isn't sharp. If your image isn't sharp, then there's no real point showing the image because, you know, it's just not going to be, you can't see the feathered detail, you won't be able to see specific things in the image that are quite important compared to if you get a nail a really sharp photo, I'd much rather choose a really sharp photo with a decent background uh, and decent colors than a uh, heavily, you know, heavily um, photoshopped image that was actually not very sharp. Lastly, we've got uh, a clean perch. So this is hard to come by. It's not exactly, we can't do this the entire time. Sometimes we can set up a perch, but sometimes we just, the bird just does it for us. So we can't choose it to sit on a pole electricity pile or electricity wire because that's where they want to sit, best vantage point to get prey, etc. But if you can, a clean perch with just one branch is always nice. It just makes a really nice clean image compared to some with, you know, leaves covering the birds like plumage and etc. Alrighty, so I've just got a disclaimer right here. Check that out before we head on and then we'll get started it out before we head on and then we'll get started. Alrighty, quickly just before we get started just want to mention that some of these photos are, aren't particularly sharp and that's just because I did just save them directly from Instagram when they sent them to me. Um, so I do apologize for that if you do think they're a bit uh, soft and not as sharp as I'd like. Just keep that in mind as well if you are trying to critique images as well. Anyway, so I'll leave every Instagram uh, account of the photographer in the right and on the settings on the left. This shot was taken by Bella, it's a superb fairy run, and it was taken with the Sigma 150-600mm lens, which has a max uh, f-stop of 6.3, which means that at 600mm you're shooting at 6.3. A uh, really good lens, I use it myself. So the settings with this were 500th of a second, ISO 800, and f6.3. So overall, there's only two main things out of this that I could pick up. The rest are literally perfect, and it is a really nice image. So the first one is just with the shutter speed and the second one is the perspective. So I'll get into the shutter speeds first. So what I'm meaning about this is this general rule of thumb that what your um, lens focal length is, so this one would be 600 millimeters, then you shouldn't go below six, uh, one six hundredth of a second. So that would be 640th of a second. It is a good rule, but it doesn't have to be followed, and Bella hasn't used it here. She's gone at 500th of a second, which is completely fine, and as you can see, the fairy run is uh, really sharp. Um, but some birds, especially, especially actually fairy runs, are quite flitty and don't like to stay still very long, and this can mean that they're jumping around a lot, and when you're trying to get photos, that means that it could just be a fraction out of focus. Um, if you're taking a photo of a kookaburra or something, it's not going to affect it as much because they usually do stay quite still. But for those, you know, honey ears and things that do move around quite fast, it's good to stay above your focal length amount because if you don't, it can lead to some cam camera shake. And that's just because of your hands holding the camera and it can't hold it steady 
Of course, if you use a tripod, that's completely fine. A couple of my new images have been used with flash at 250th of a second, and they're um, perfectly sharp, so it's not always correct, but it is a good rule to follow. Next, perspective. Now, as you can see in the background, we've got lovely green um, around the bottom of the image, and at the top we've got a bit of white from the overcast, I'd say sky, or just from the sky in general. So a good thing about perspective is that you can change the way the image looks just by the way you stand. So if you're you know, sitting on the ground, you're looking up at this, let's say we're looking from the ground up at this ran, this, let's say the shot was taken at shoulder height. If we were on the ground, we would have got a full white background and then the bird would have been there. Most likely the image would have been overexposed because of that background, um, which could have led to some problems and that, that wouldn't have been good. Again, if, um, you know, they were standing up a bit higher or, um, you know, standing up on a balcony or something above the bird, then perspective changes because then you'd get a nice green background. It depends what you want and it's not a, a whole, like, it's not a big deal. But because if you're standing up too high, then you're looking down the bird and it doesn't look as good. And if you're standing up to, if you're looking up at the bird, then it also won't look as good because you're almost diagonal with it. Apart from that, really nice shot and congratulations for hitting it. Alrighty, this shot is taken from Byron, it is a hummingbird. Instagram is on the right and then the settings will be on the left for you guys. So as we all know, hummingbirds are very fast and high shutter speed is needed, which Byron's nailed, which is great. Two things that I'd say uh, would have made this image better would have been just a bit more eye contact on the uh, hummingbird. Again, very hard though when they're moving very fast. You can't just like move around while they're just fluttering there. They're only there for a couple seconds, even not even a second. Uh, while the second thing is that I'm looking at this image is just a bit of cloning down below uh, the bird here. So if we zoom in, uh, mind the focus of course. So right here we see this flower is kind of blocking the bird, even just cloning out this bit here, I reckon would really improve it by just making that, um, you know, just using the background, cloning it in, getting rid of that. A green bit would overall, I think, lift the image. I like I like the pink flowers. I like you to keep them because of the composition and makes it really nice. But just it's covering the bird, and that's just a little thing for me to pick up and can be fixed really easy in Photoshop. Alrighty, our first non-Australian bird, the blackbird. Uh, this was taken from Dozier. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. Uh, it was taken at f6.3, 1 800th of a second, and 3200 ISO. So looking at the image, it's really cool. It's obviously the mum or the dad feeding the baby, which um, shows the settings, uh, sorry, shows a really nice setting and tells a story, which is always really nice. I love the low um, angle as well. Uh, that makes the image look really nice. If anything, maybe just a bit lower on the angle, but then again, that's hard to do because you can scare off the bird and you wouldn't want to scare you know, the mum or the dad with the baby because then they might uh, flee away from the baby. So looking at the settings, I would have to say that the ISO is quite high. I don't know what the uh, light was like wherever it was taken, but judging by top left, um, there looks like there is a decent amount of sunlight or whatever, and that could just be due, of course, you know, to the ISO uh, 3200. It looked up, look some bits a bit overexposed. And I'd say for this image, probably not use as much ISO because you're going to get a lot of noise out of the image and you can then in Lightroom of course just go and bring up the exposure which you know that works completely fine. I'd say stick with this shot, go maybe a, um, 1 800, stick with 1 800 and just bring down the ISO from 3200 that's just a lot and some cameras can't cope of course your camera might be able to cope completely mine can't though sadly. So that, that's really only one thing that I can think about this image. Another one would probably be just the background is not as blurred out as I was like, which probably means that you are quite far away and there might be some crop in there. But then also you might not be using a very long telephoto lens, which again is completely fine. We all don't have the money for that. And apart from that, I really like the image, so congratulations. Alrighty, this photo was taken by Lachlan and it is a gorgeous picture of this snipe here. Um, so the settings are 1 1000th of a second, ISO 140, 
and f5.6. So the lens he was using was a 200 to 500 f5.6, so he's at the lowest he can go, and a d750 for his camera. So looking at the image, uh, there is a couple black spotches in the background that, you know, kind of um, take my eye off the bird. Either there's two things I would do. I'd either make the whole background look like, you know, kind of like this, or instead make the whole background look like this. And it would just, I think, a nice smooth background would probably improve it instead of those dark splotches in front. But again, that's just a personal thing, of course. Everyone can have their own opinions on the shot. Lachlan has his own, of course. He's edited this, I'm sure. Looked at that and, you know, it's his opinion to leave him in or, yeah. Other thing was a reflection. I think you can change here because it's a reflection. Um, you can't place water in front of the bird, um, but it would have looked really nice to have the face in the reflection as well. But apart from that, nice shot. Alrighty, this shot is by Indra and me. Uh, screenshotting it from Instagram has definitely not fared this image well on the computer. My fault, not his at all. Um, this image is sharp, so just keep that in mind while I critique it. So looking at the image, um, it looks really nice. Uh, when I look at the settings, I see one four hundredth of a second. Not sure if it was on a tripod or not. I did not ask. Um, but again, rule of thumb: uh, stick below, uh, stick above your focal length. So I do know for a fact that he was using the Sigma one hundred and fifty to six hundred millimeter lens. Uh, so it might not have been at fully extended at six hundred millimeters. But if assuming it, it was, um, he may have, he may or could have lost uh, some focus on the image, but it doesn't look like he did, so that's all good. Second thing is on the perch, we've got a couple bits of bark on it that are coming off, it looks like. I don't mind these ones over here, at the bottom over here. But this one here, I think, is a bit too big for my liking, and I kind of like a really nice clean perch. It kind of draws my eye a bit um, away from the bird. Um, but then again, just my opinion, so don't take my word for it. Apart from that, uh, we got a lovely pose, lovely eye contact, and great shot. Alrighty, this sweet shot of this rainbow bee that was taken by Tim. He's got a YouTube channel as well. I will leave his link in the description. He actually does a vlog on which he took this shot as well as an awesome kingfisher shot. So definitely go and check him out. So looking at this shot, I'm like, wow, that's really cool. Rainbow beaters are very fast and very agile, and to catch one in flight is amazing. So looking at the settings, we've got 1 640th of a second and ISO 1600. Just looking at that, I can tell that it must be a bit dark, which can really uh, affect birds of prey shots, or not birds of prey, sorry, um, birds and flight shots, just because of the low shutter speed that you have to use to keep the image actually quite bright. Uh, at 1 640th of a second, it probably didn't have enough, um, you know, it wasn't probably fast enough to be able to capture this perfectly. But then again, it still captures a really nice image. We've got lovely colors, great wing position, uh, as it's just flying off from the drink, and the water is gorgeous. That's probably the only thing I'd talk about with this image. Maybe bring, like, sometimes like this, ISO is good to have a bit higher. But then if you're not expecting to get this, then why, why should you um, have to bother changing settings to look for in-flight shots if you're just trying to get it better on a perch but on a log or you know on an actual perch not flying in air which is of course a lot harder i'd probably bring the iso up a fraction more and maybe bring the settings up to one eight hundredth of a second maybe you might have got a little bit more focus on it but then again very hard to capture autofocus doing this um kind of stunt so awesome shot tim and good luck with your youtube channel Alrighty, this awesome tablet shot was taken by Ronan. It was taken at 1 500th of a second, f6.3 and ISO 400 with a Sigma 150 to 500 millimeter lens. I haven't used that lens before and judging by the shots is a great lens. Um, looking at the ISO, very low and you've also got a very low shutter speed. You can probably bring up your shutter speed if you brought up your ISO a little bit as well. I personally would like a little bit more light, so again, bring up the ISO a bit more. Um, I'd say you've got plenty of you've got plenty of space. You won't start getting really um, a lot of noise in the image until probably 800, maybe 1600 ISO. I don't know what camera you use. I think you use 90 or 80D, so I think you'd be fine on um, noise. There, my camera has a bit of noise at 1600, so I just think it needs a bit more light. Um, that can be done in post-processing as well, so just bring up the exposure in Lightroom or Photoshop. Um, this would, this, that would make the image, I reckon, um, a little bit better. 
but great eye contact, great pose, great low perspective, so nice shot. Alrighty, our second non-Australian bird um, from Jasper is a mountain chickadee, Canadian bird. Not sure if I got that right, don't quote me on it. So this shot was taken at 1, 2, uh, 1 2,500th of a second, f6.3 and 1600 ISO. So looking at your very high shutter speed means that it was pretty bright that day. So you can definitely bring down your ISO because that's just going to, um, you know, amount to noise and, you, and no one wants noise in their photo. It was shot with the 18 to 200 millimeter lens, meaning you were quite close to the image, which is, uh, to the bird, which is always great. A lovely blocker in the background. Um, look, the only thing I'd say with this image is just really the bird's position, um, in the frame as, because it is quite central um, you know, it's always good to kind of leave a bit of room on, you know, either side, as you've been seeing in a lot of the other images, and that just allows for um, a bit more of a dynamic feel, and a really nice composition makes it look, you know, smooth. People do get quite bored of seeing, you know, this in the center each time, and of course, if you don't usually do it in the center, and you just try a center shot, then that's completely fine. Um, and again, yeah, I'd probably, you know, cropping it more to there, looking at that, or even just while you're shooting the shot, um, to have it on one certain side does help. Um, I think you can use AI Servo, I think it's AI Servo, and that, that means that when you hold down the button, it doesn't continue trying to find focus, so when you move around, it's still locked onto a certain spot you want. I use that for when I do bird photography, so if I, you know, I'm taking a photo of a wren, I can focus it and then move to the composition I like. Um, the other thing is eye contact, like to get a nice eye, con eye contact, but of course you can't get that, um, it's wildlife, they're unpredictable. Apart from that, I'm really impressed with this shot and uh, it's really nice, um, it's a really nice overall um, picture, so good job. Alrighty, so last and not least, we got Matthew's shot of this gorgeous pelican in flight here. So just looking at the settings, um, they do look a bit weird. We got one five hundredth of a second f eight, and then ISO six forty. Looking at the image, we can see that some bits are quite overexposed, uh, such as like behind the um the pelican and in the front of the water as well, as well as actually some of the wings is a bit overexposed. And there's a couple things I would change with your settings. First things first, probably shoot a bit lower than f eight. If you got a really long telephoto lens, like an f four, like f four six hundred mil or something, you might want to um stick with f eight, but I'm not sure what lens you use. I'm just going to say that I'd probably stick a bit lower, f6.3 maybe. Um, and it'll just maybe make the background a bit more blurred as well because the higher the um, f stop, the more the background's going to be in focus as well. And that doesn't help in birds in flight because you just want to get the bird as the main focus. Um, 1 500th of a second, I'd bring that up and I would leave the ISO how it is. So since we're going to be bringing down the um, f stop to f6.3, not f8 it will line up the image more. So then we'd probably bring up the shutter speed to about one, um, one, one thousandth of a second, uh, 1200 of a second, uh, even higher, depending on the light. But then when you're shooting birds in the flight, it's really hard to kind of tell, you don't know um, what's gonna happen. If they're flying, you're really just like shooting and aiming. You're not really gonna be changing settings when they're in there. So overall, great shot. We've got some really nice eye contact, a good crop. I like the composition. And really, if we just maybe um, change those settings, I reckon it would have been a cracker shot. So good job. Thank you to everyone who did send me their images. You guys are the reason that this video got underway and was able to be posted. So thanks for that. I'll leave all your links in the description. Make sure you go check them out, guys. They're really, really good. And um, until next time, peace.